Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 1234. Page 1234. Let's get going. There are five problems there. Number 16 is the very first one. Let's take a look at it. Number 16 is very straightforward, very simple. Number 16 tells us that T is positive. And we'll find out in a second why they insist that the T is positive. It's a very straightforward question, as I said. We are told that t squared minus 4 is equal to 0, which, which implies that t squared must equal 4, which in turn implies that t has to be either positive or negative 4, or negative 2 rather. Because positive 2 times positive 2 will give us positive 4, and negative 2 times negative 2 will give us positive 4. So then why do they insist that the x or t has to be positive? because it is impossible to grade in a negative quantity. If you're working on a grading problem and if you're, if, if you're working on a grading problem and if you arrive at a negative quantity at the, at the end, you know you've done it wrong because it's not possible to grade in negative, which is why they say that T has to be positive. The answer is simply two. Next one. Number 17. In number 17, we are told that the side AB, EB, BD, CD are 1800, 1400, 700, 800, and the question is how much is side AE. And what we are given here is this. Two triangles like this. And we are further told, we are further told that angle AEB, AEB, which is A, B, C, D, and E. Angle AEB equals angle C, D, B. And without this information, Without this additional bit of information, we could, we could not have been able to solve this problem. Angle, it should say angle AEB. Angle AEB equals angle CDB. CDB, there you go. These two angles are equal. We also know that these two are, these two are uh, vertical angles. If you draw two lines, any two lines, this angle has to equal this angle, which means this angle must equal that angle. Furthermore, we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is 180, which means this angle plus this angle plus this angle is 180, and this angle plus that angle plus that angle is 180. And if this angle is equal to this angle, and that angle is equal to this angle, then this th third angle must also be equal to each other. Now we are dealing with a situation where, where the three angles in the two triangles are equal to each other. If the three angles in the two triangles are equal to each other, if you have two triangles where we are told that there are three angles of this triangle equals three angles of that triangle, then these two triangles are similar triangles. What does it mean for two, two triangles to be similar? It just means that the sides are in proportion. Sides are in proportion, exact same proportion for all the sides. For example, we know that A to B is 1800. A to B is 1800. We know that A, E to B, E to B we are told is 1400. We further know that B to D, B to D is equal to, oh there you go, there is your, this is 7, this is 14. Let's put down 7 here. This is 7 and this is 14, there you go. That means that this triangle here, big triangle, is twice the size of that triangle. Every side of this triangle is two times as much as every side in this triangle. We know C to D is 800. Where is C to D? C to, this is 8. This is 7. 
And what we want to find out is this guy right here. Let's pick up speed, okay? I'm taking, taking too long. So this is 14, that's 7. This is 18. That means this must be 9. We are not interested in that one. We are not interested in that one. We are what we are interested in this one. And we just established that this bigger triangle is twice the size of that triangle. This side here, D to C, is 8. This must be 16. This must be 16. That's all. That must be 16. I'm going to erase all this thing here so that it's not as crowded. We know that this side is 8. If that is 8, that has to be 16. Now keep in mind that keep in mind that as I was doing the work on the blackboard, I was too lazy to write down hundreds. I just put down the 18, 14, and 8. When you want to grade in the answer, make sure you got grade in 1600 and not 16. And that's all. That's number 17. Let's, let's take a look at number 18. Number 18 is another one, very straightforward, very simple problem with two very simple linear equations. We are told that the first equation, x plus y, we are told, is equal to minus 9. And we are told that x plus 2y is equal to minus 25, negative 25. The question simply is, what's the value of x? If you want to find the value of x, what we want to do is get rid of y. Here we have 2y, here we have 1y. If we can somehow make this into 2y, we can get rid of it by subtracting one from the other. So let's do that. We're going to convert this into 2y. Let's do it in a different color so we can see it. We're going to convert this into 2y by multiplying the first equation by 2. Let's multiply both sides of the first equation by 2. Voilà. And when we do that, what we find is that the first equation, after, after having been multiplied by 2, boils down to, this is the first equation here, boils down to 2 times x plus 2 times y equals 2 times 9 with a negative, negative 18. Let's erase all this thing, we don't need it. And just rewrite, let's, let's, I could have written this thing down here. I'm going to rewrite up here, 2x plus 2y is equal to minus 18. That's, that's what I should have done in the first place. So this is just 2 times this equation. That's it, we're done. Let's subtract this equation from that equation. This is positive, it becomes negative, this becomes negative, and this negative is going to become positive because we are sub subtracting this equation from the top equation. Positive 2y and negative 2y will drop out, which is, which is what the whole point was all about. And now we have x minus 2x. x minus 2x is going to give us minus x. And negative 25 and positive 18 is going to give us negative 7, which implies that x must be positive 7. And that was number 19. Let's move on to the next one. Just give me one second. Number, number 19 is the next one. We're going to keep number 19. Let's keep number 19 in abeyance. Let's learn a vocabulary, shall we? Number 2. Number 20 is what we're going to go to. In other words, we're going to keep the number 19 aside for the time being. Let's keep it aside for the time being. We'll get to it in a little bit. That's exactly what abeyance means. To keep something in abeyance, which means leave it aside for time being. We'll get to it in a second. We did learn this word, vocab word, on day number nine. As I always remind you, it's very important, it is vital, it is crucial, it is absolutely essential that you work on your vocabulary. That's how you're going to get a better score in the verbal part of the exam. Here we are to work on the math part, but you mustn't forget the other half of the exam. Work on the vocabulary, watch the videos. There are 100 videos, SAT vocabulary videos. Just type in SAT vocabulary words, day 9. Watch that video and you will learn this word along with other good vocabulary words. Let's keep it in advance. Let's keep it aside for the time being. Let's work on number 20. In number 20, we are told that A is equal to 5 root 2. And we are told that 2 times... We are told no such thing. 
you are told a a is equal to 5 times root 2 and you refer the toll that uh, 2a is equal to 2 times x the question is how much is x so we have two equations here one equation tells us that 2 times a equals root of 2x and here we are told that a equals to 5 times root 2 which is why I was about to multiply this equation by 2. Let's multiply this equation by 2 here. So that we end up with 2 times a is 2a, which is exactly what we have here. Which is exactly what we have here. And now here we have 5 times 2, which is 10, root 2. And this is 2a. But 2a we know is equal to root 2x. So this is root 2x is equal to 10 times root 2. Stay with me in this story, okay? 2a is equal to 2 times root 2 x, 2 times x root, root of 2x, which is what this is. And here we get 10 times 5, which 5 times 2, which is 10 right there. Now we need to get rid of root sign. Root sign we can very easily get rid of it by squaring both sides. If you square both sides, we can get rid of root sign. If we square this side, square of root 2x will simply be 2x. And here when we square it, we have to pay attention, square of 10 is 100. And square of root 2 is just 2. There you go, we are, we are done. 100 times 2 and 2 times x, let's divide both sides by 2. If we divide both sides by 2, there you go, x equals 100. And that's all there is. Very simple, very straightforward. Let's do number 19 now. I need to erase this thing. I'm going to give you a second to in number 19 we are told that first of all we are dealing with a right angle in a right triangle rather not right angle we are dealing with a right angle which is very important in this story because what we are about to say, what we are about to find, only applies for a right angle triangle. We are told the sine of x is equal to 4 fifth. So we can draw a right angle triangle. Just any old right angle triangle. And just, there are two angles, let's call one of them x. Doesn't matter whether we call, it makes no difference whether we call this angle x or that angle x makes no difference. Sine has to be 4 over 5, which means opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse has to be 4 over 5. Now the question is, if that's true, the question is, how much is cosine of 90 minus x? That's all they're looking for, 90 minus x. So where is 90 minus x here? This is 90, this is x, which means this one must be 90 minus x. This angle must be 90 minus x degrees. And you're looking for a cosine of it. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. What do you know? What we find is that in a right angle triangle, sine of x must equal cosine of 90 minus x. Sine of x, sine of x must equal, x degrees must equal cosine of 90 minus x. What this also means, what this also, this is an identity. This is an identity. Identity means it is true by definition all the time. What that also means, so we're done with this, we're done with this problem. I'm going to erase this thing. We're going to move, we're going to do something different. What this also means is that if it, if you have two different triangles, let's say something like this, something like this, this is A degrees we are told, and then something like this, and this is we are called, this is B degrees. And if we are told, if we are told that the sine of A degrees, if, if we are told the sine of A degrees is equal to, if we are told that the sine of A degrees 
is equal to cosine of b degrees. Let's erase all of this thing, we're done with this thing. Now we're dealing with these two triangles. So if you have a situation like this, and if we are told that sine of a is equal to cosine of b is, then we know this implies, then we know this implies this. If that is true, then it must also be true that a plus b must equal 90 degrees. Must equal 90 degrees. If sine of a in one triangle we are told is equal to cosine of b in another triangle, two different triangles as you can see there, then it must be true that a plus b must be complementary. If this is true, if this is true, then this implies that a plus b degrees must be I shouldn't say a plus b, rather I meant to say a and b. a and b must be complementary, meaning that a plus b, a and b must add up to 90 degrees. Now having learned this thing, having learned this thing, let's turn to, let's turn to page 1131. 1131, a problem that we have already done, but since it's related to this one, I will going to redo it. It's very important, it is vital, it is crucial, it is absolutely essential that you have your book in front of you at all times when you are working with me. Turn to page number 1131, 1131, number 23. Take a look at it. In number 23, what we are told is exactly this situation. We are given two different triangles and we are told that sine of A equals sine of B. If we are told that sine of A equals cosine, or rather, what a cosine of B, what I meant to say is that, cosine of B is what I meant to say. If that is true, then we must be able to conclude that A plus B must equal 90. A and B are complementary angle. A and B, A plus B must be 90. And now we are told in this problem, let's do it in the top here. So A plus B must be 90. And once we understand that part, once we realize that part, then this number 23, which is supposed to be a hard problem, is no longer hard. The rest is downhill. Because we are further told that we are further told that A is equal to 4K minus 22 and B is equal to 6K minus 13. And of course we are told that sine of A equals cosine of B, which means A plus B must be 90. So if we were to add up to the equation here, we get A plus B, which is 90, which is 90. 4K plus 6K is 10K, and this is going to give us 5, this is going to give us 35. This is going to give us 35, this is 90, this is 10K minus 35. Bring the 35 to this side, so we get 10K is equal to 90 plus 35, which is simply... 125 or 112 125 this is going to be 5 and 9 plus 3 is 12 there we go 10k equals 125 which means I need the room now so I'm going to raise it if 10k is equal to 1 is equal to 125 10k if we, if we divide both sides by 10 k must equal 12.5 Number 23, number 23 on page number 1131 in the previous exam, which was supposed to be a hard question, is actually a very easy question if you understand this identity. That if the sine of angle A in any triangle, doesn't have to be the same triangle, doesn't have to be right angle triangle, uh, sh rather, show, rather it doesn't need to be shown as a right angle triangle. As we saw in the picture, the third side was not shown, but we would, what we were told is that the sine of A in that triangle and that uh, sine of uh, angle A is equal to cosine of B. Well, if sine of A equals cosine of B, then A plus B must add up to 90. And that's what this is all about. We'll stop right here. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll finish. We will start the next section. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to work with me, if you would like to uh, get my help to get you ready for the exam, I tutor in math, obviously. I can also help you with vocabulary and the grammar portion, the writing portion. Go to my website at kishwaniprep.com and send me an email from there or fill out the form, okay?
Bye now.